Horseshoes. Shoes for horses? They don't even have feet. Well, better make a knife out of these. So horseshoes never really have enough carbon to make a knife blade. They're usually made of a low carbon tool steel or sometimes aluminum or a plastic composite or back in the day iron or back in the day bronze. So spark testing this one demonstrates a few long sparks that do flower or burst in the end. But we want to see is a copious shower of long bursting sparks typical of high carbon steel as seen here in this knife I made in the past. So as expected, our horseshoe appears to be a low carbon tool steel, if I had to guess. I want to do one other test. We're going to heat it, then quench it in water, which should get us close to the steel's maximum hardness, at least in many cases, not every case, but it's a good enough test for us here. That file is really uh, biting in and it should be skating. Uh, making a sort of a ringing noise. So this is definitely not hardenable, not to the point that we need it. We need an HRC of about 55 plus to make a decent knife edge. We'll put the hardness files on it just to test it out, but we're going to be way below range. And indeed it comes out in the 40-ish range. We need some suitable high carbon knife steel and luckily I have some laying around. Hmm. I have an idea. But first we need to straighten out our horseshoe Keystone Cop style, so cue the Benny Hill music and watch me Claude wrestle some red hot steel. You can place your bets in the comments section as to whether or not I end up with a horseshoe shaped scar on my leg. Hey, no one got burned. And look at this little divot here. This might make a good transition point from the blade to the handle. I'm going to take a piece of 15 and 20 steel, which as I understand is essentially 1075 carbon steel with some nickel added um, for usually for etching and Damascus purposes. And then we'll also take a piece of 1075 plain carbon steel and we will tack weld them together and then forge weld them to the horseshoe and use that as our edge or uh, the main part of the blade so we'll have a nice serviceable hardenable blade. First we'll have to grind a perfectly flat surface on the horseshoe to facilitate a good forge weld. So here we're applying the flux or borax in this case to the hot steel and then putting it back in the forge until the flux can be seen to boil on a uh, really bright yellow metallic surface and that's how we know it's ready for welding. We'll go through several cycles of fluxing, heating and then hammering just to make sure the forge weld is complete and solid. You guys know me. As usual, I'm going to hammer in a reverse banana curve here, um, sort of convexing toward the blade so that the uh, when we hammer the blade uh, bevels in, it'll straighten out back towards the spine and everything will even out. Remember, we have to hammer up the tip of this 1075 steel strip. It has to go all the way up to the, to the uh, tip of the knife, so we have to hammer it in that direction to get it there. That way we'll have a nice hardenable cutting edge all the way through the length of the knife.
Next, I'm going to draw the bevel down very carefully. We're not working with a lot of steel here, so any errant hammer blows can leave a uh, mark that we won't be able to grind out. I'm going to try to widen the blade as we're doing this. So here I've done a bit of shaping on the grinder and then I've brought it back to the anvil and forged to make sure it's flat and clean. The anvil, you know, is not a, a perfectly flat piece of metal so I, I get another piece of mild steel here and I'll use some really light hammer blows to make sure everything is smooth and straight. Again, we just don't have a lot of metal here to grind away any imperfections. We have to forge the sides of it as near to shape as possible. Now for the handle. I wasn't sure whether to cut the handle to length or to try to hammer it down into a pommel swell. I think I'll try the latter. About halfway through this process I realized uh, I could make a horse's head out of the extra metal. So summoning all my blacksmith skills, I make what appears to be a Snuffleupagus. Or the blue alien from the Star Wars Cantina. It's eventually tapped into more of a horse head, but I think in the end it still reminds me more of Sesame Street than a horse. So this turned out pretty straight and I'd like to keep it that way in the quench. Um, so I'm going to put it through some heat cycling here three times, heat it to uh, orange red hot and then let it cool to gray. And hopefully that will help prevent some warping or cracking and get the grain size uh, down a little bit smaller. I'm sorry about this quench footage. The uh, camera was actually focused on the reflection in the oil instead of the oil. But this uh, quench went well. The knife was straight and it skates a file handily, so we're in good shape. I did temper it twice at um, 390 degrees for an hour each before I started the grinding. There's some forge weld marks there that I'm hoping are going to grind out. Overall, I really like this blade shape. And this this first side of the knife actually looks pretty good. I'm 
I'm really enjoying that. Unfortunately, the other side has this area that didn't complete a forge weld. I don't know if it delaminated or was never really joined, but either way, the effect is the same. It didn't go all the way through the knife, but still. Then there's this little pitted area at the tip that was left over from forging. It still looks good hanging on a wall, and I can definitely see this in someone's kitchen. So I'll keep it around. I'll put an edge on it, and we'll use it. Well, you know me, that's a nice proof of concept, but a second knife is made. And this time I'll pay a little more attention to the forge welding near the handle and be a little more careful with any surface pitting and we'll see if we can get a slightly better result. Moving on to the handle, I am gonna try another horse's head. A little bit different technique this time though. There's a pretty well-known blacksmith named Brian Brazil, I think is his name, and he has a pretty solid technique for forging these horse heads, and uh, I didn't really even attempt it. I just sort of went my own way with it, but maybe next time I'll try that instead. I'm going to file this and set apart some ears. Then I'll work my way around and maybe we can get something that looks like a little mane going. This one will be uh, heat cycled and quenched and tempered just like the last one. I'm going to sand it to about 800 grit and then polish it before etching it in the ferric chloric acid and we'll see what we get. The acid is neutralized in baking soda and water. Definitely have to neutralize this. You can't just wipe it off. It'll get all over the shop. It'll stay on the blade and rust it and um, cause all kinds of problems. So some people neutralize it in Windex. I use that solution. Next I'm going to take some metal polish and try to bring out some of the difference in the etching between the three metals. Murray Carter checks sharpness of his knives by applying three fingers along the edge like so, and based on how much pressure must be applied before you since you're about to get cut, you can judge sharpness. I like to take it across my thumbnail and see that it catches without any pressure, um, or I usually also just check it on shaving, which I think is an excellent test of geometry and sharpness. Many people cut paper of varying thicknesses, but I prefer the shave test, and I've actually grown to like Mr. Carter's three-finger test as well. So 
So there it is. You could definitely polish out those black oxides on the 1075 cutting edge and make that very shiny if you wanted to. You could dress up and polish the back of it a little better and get all the marks out of there if you wanted to. But I'm sort of happy with how this turned out. I think it went really well. Hey, I've got to tell you guys, I'm going to start selling these knives on eBay with 100% of the proceeds going to charity. So start looking for these at my uh, eBay site. You can check the link below. I learned a lot, guys. I had a lot of fun. Have a good one.